Do you need to buy a used tractor? Hey, I'm Mark Hall with Alabama Cooperative Extension System. A lot of people are just getting started, maybe getting started as an organic farmer, or you've got land that you need to keep bush hog and you're paying somebody to bush hog and you wonder would it be cheaper to buy a tractor and a bush hog. We're going to talk with Wayne Green, who's a farmer in Lauderdale County, and uh, he's bought and sold equipment over the years, and he's going to tell us about buying a low-cost tractor. We're not talking about a gently used tractor. We're talking about a tractor, uh, a low-dollar tractor, a to-get-started tractor, a just a, maybe a limited-use tractor. Wayne, tell us about buying a tractor. What do you need to think about? What do you need to look for in buying a used tractor? You know, I have farmers that has five acres and some has 10 and some of them has 100 acres. What size tractor they need, what horsepower, what's the most ep economical for them? And uh, so uh, I try to help them with that. Uh, this is a uh, 3,000 forward tractor, which I'd recommend for somebody had five or 10 acres, uh, maybe, you know, to do a little tillage work or maybe uh, bush hogging or stuff like that with. It's a, it's a real nice tractor. What I usually look at when I buy a tractor, I usually want to check the engine oil in it and see if the engine oil is good and clean in it. And then I, I try to check the tires and make sure the tires are very expensive now and see if the tires are good on it. And then I try to check the, uh, the steering on it, make sure the steering is tied on it. Check your hydraulic lift. I try to see if it'll raise up and how fast it'll come up and uh, check the PTO, which is the power takeoff that turns a bush hog, uh, if you're going to do any bush hogging with it. What, what is clean oil in a tractor? This is the oil in this tractor. If you'll notice here in the sun, see how bright this oil is, how pretty and bright it is? Put it on your finger, it's got a pretty bright color. So that yeah. tells me the oil in this engine, you know, yeah. is real clean. Yeah. And you, you can also tell by oil, if you see a lot of flakes in it, a lot of real shiny stuff like glitter, yeah. that means you've got an engine problem. Yeah. If it's real black and dark, the tractor has not been taken care of, you know. And you can always hold it out in the sun, you know, and in in that, all that light will show you what condition your oil is in. Uh, would there be anything else in the oil that you'd look for, uh, water or... Is, is anything like that an issue? Usually if it's got water in your oil, it's going to have a creamy, milky type color. So I would, you know, I would look for that too. If it's got a creamy, milky color, it's got water in it. Okay. If you see something green on the ground, it's, it's leaking antifreeze. Uh, yeah. And that can be very expensive if you've got a radiator problem. Uh, and, you know, your engine, uh, if you got most time, if you see oil dripping, you got a problem. Most older tractors, 20 to 25 years old, you're going to have some oil seepage. I mean, you're going to see a few light spots of oil. As long as it's just not dripping at a steady yeah. pace, you know, it's not going to hurt anything. And come up here and tell us a little bit about tires and which one you look for on tires. Yes, the tires on this tractor, they're, they're worn down. They're probably about 30%, and they've got a few dry cracks in them and things. But on a small tractor like this, it's not a lot of weight. So most of the time, this tire would probably last four or five years anyway. So I wouldn't, on a small tractor, tires is probably not as important as they are on a bigger tractor with a lot of weight to them. When is it too much play in your steering? Well, when you, you can always turn your steering wheel and before your wheels start moving, I mean, you look at your two front wheels and before they start moving, see how much, if you turn your steering wheel like three to four inches before your wheels move, you know, you've got a lot of wear in your front end. So that's going to have to be fixed. Uh, this tractor, somebody has added the power steering to it. And I would recommend if you're buying a used tractor, uh, power steering is real good on one. I mean, you can make it without it but it makes it a lot easier, you know, to maneuver around with power steering. Four-wheel drive versus two-wheel drive, is that, is that an issue? It, I, you know, I would recommend, you know, for most five to ten acre farmers, I would recommend just a two-wheel drive, unless you got a front-end loader on it. Then the four-wheel drive it does a lot better with the front-end loader. 
uh, the hydraulics with all tractors, even a 35 horsepower tractor now would have hydraulics. The majority of tractors do have hydraulics now. Uh, you hardly ever see a tractor now with hydro without hydraulic system on it. How how do you check what would, a first time buyer? How would they check to see if your hydraulics are good? Would you look for a leak or the lift or talk to me a little bit about yes. that? Yes, I mean you can always let your tractor sit and uh, sit when your tractor's running and see if it's any oil leaking out from under it, hydraulic oil, and also your lift when you. Uh, Pull your lever up for your yeah. lift to go up. I mean, the lift should go up pretty fast. If it goes up real slow, more likely you got problems. This is a lift system on this tractor um, that you would use on a bush hog. Uh, see how fast this lift goes up on this tractor? It only takes like 10 to 15 seconds. That tells me. The hydraulics are in real good condition on this tractor. If you pull this lever and it takes like a minute for it to go up, you got hydraulic problems, which can be very expensive. Okay, uh, talk to me about the PTO. Yes, checking your PTO on the tractor. You need to, to when you put your lever in into PTO, you need to make sure the PTO starts turning immediately. If it don't, you probably got a problem, or if the PTO will not shut off when you put the lever in the off position, you've got a problem. So either one of those, you know, tells you you got a problem with your PTO. If it comes on real fast and it stops good, you know, you're good. This is a 540 shaft. The 540 shaft has six splines around it like this. It'll be six of them. Your 1,000 RPM shaft has 21 splines. So uh, that's the way you can tell the difference between a 540 and a 1,000 RPM shaft is the splines on the shaft. One has six, the other one has 21. If you're buying a tractor and you have a cutter with a 540 shaft, PTO shaft in your bush hog or bush hog cutter, and you buy a tractor with a 1,000 RPM shaft, that cutter will not work on this tractor. You will, uh, you will either have to buy another cutter or buy another tractor, and um, and vice versa. So you need to, when you're buying a tractor, you need to buy something, you know, that matches your cutter, or buy a cutter that matches your tractor. Uh, what size bush hog would that pull? I would recommend a five foot for five this. Five foot. This particular, it's about a thirty-five or six horsepower tractor. A five foot bush hog or cutter does real good on this tractor. At what point, acres wise, would most people need to step up and get a bigger tractor, a bigger bush hog? Well, I think if you get up into maybe twenty or twenty-five or thirty acres, you know, I would look at going like a fifty horsepower tractor and maybe getting a six foot cutter, and. Um, and if you got, you know, 30 or 40 acres, I would probably try to go to a 50 or 60 horsepower tractor and get a seven or eight foot cutter. Uh, so it's just according to how much time you want to spend out there using a the cutter. Now this would be like if somebody had 100 acres and needed to keep bush hog. Yes. This would be a pretty good tractor. It would. What, what would you look for on a bigger tractor that you wouldn't. What 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 would be the issues specific to a higher horsepower tractor? Basically, the same thing applies to a big tractor that it does a small tractor. You look under it for oil leaks, and uh, of course, this tractor uh, it has air on it, and I would always get in there and make sure the air conditioner works properly on it. This tractor here, uh, it comes with a with two PTO shafts in it, so you can use. Uh, two different uh, implements on it. This is a 1,000 RPM shaft, which is a 21 spline. This is a 540 shaft, which is a 6 spline, which gives you an option over the other tractor. You can use uh, either one on it, so you don't have to worry about it. This tractor has got hydraulic, dual hydraulic valves. Uh, like you can put a front end loader on this tractor and you already got your vial set up on it. 
Uh, like pulling a big hay roller. Most people's got a 15 foot bat wing cutter that they use with this type of tractor. Uh, it's a real good bush hog tractor. It's, it keeps you clean uh, inside. Uh, you don't have to worry about eating dust all day long. And it's also cool. In today's market, you can spend from a range of maybe $3,500 to $10,000 on a, on a good used tractor. It's really according on uh, if you want a, a tractor like this 3000 or you want a cab tractor with air on it, you know, uh, you can, it's a variety of tractors out there in this range. And I tell people all the time, you buy a good used tractor, 10 years from now, it'll make you money because they yeah. go up every year because the new ones go up every year. So they won't lose any money. You can always turn around and resell it if you'll just take care of it. Wayne, thank you so much for that good advice and hopefully that'll help you in deciding whether you want to buy a used tractor or how to buy a good used tractor.